Hey everybody, welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. Today's video is brought to you by none other than you, the viewers themselves. Uh, this came from, I had a question from Lily uh, Yevsen, and she had asked me just to kind of think about making a video about some common surgical skills that you need to have in the OR as a CST. And a lot of these are skills that I've talked about in other videos, but those skills are kind of scattered and sprinkled all over the place on, on a bunch of different videos. So I thought I'd compile all of these skills into one main video here. Lily, thank you for the suggestion. And here we go. Now, one of the first surgical skills I kind of want to go over are creating a sponge stick. Um, this is our sponge stick instrument. It's, uh, it's got this nice little ring on it. A lot of the times, any other surgeon, it might be different for you, but uh, the surgeons that I work with, when they ask for a sponge forcep, they're asking for this without a sponge attached to it at all. When they ask for a sponge stick, they want a sponge wrapped around this. And now there are two ways to make a sponge stick. The first way to make a sponge stick is to basically make a diaper wrap around this sponge stick to kind of give it a 360 degree wrapping around the entire forcep itself. The second way we make a sponge stick is the trifold technique where you basically fold the ray tech in three, then fold that in half and just clamp across the sponge. Now there definitely are uh, benefits to both of these types of sponge sticks. Um, I see the 360 degree diaper wrap sponge stick mostly uh, in the ORs that I work in. It's great for you know soft tissue retraction, uh, dissection, and you have that 360 degree wrap so it always gives you that gripping power as you're pulling up on that tissue and also great uh, absorption uh, you know if there's something a little far down that they just need to absorb some blood and get, and get it out of their field of view. Um, the trifold technique, also very good. The only real gripping power in that uh, sponge stick is going to be at the nose of the sponge because that's, you know, that's the exposed part of the sponge. So dissection, absorption, all that type of stuff is just going to be at the nose of that sponge. Next skill I want to talk to you guys about is a tie on a pass. There are a couple different ways for doing a tie on a pass and also free ties. Um, more than likely, 90% of the time, you are always going to be doing a tie on a pass with this instrument right here. This is a tonsil, also called a schnitt. Now, when securing a tie on a pass or when a surgeon asks for a tie on a pass, uh, surgeons usually have preferences as far as that goes. But here's a couple different kinds. You can put the tie right at the end of the tonsil, like so. And that's good for getting deep down and you know getting around the structure that they need to get around so they can pull it up and tie. Other surgeons may like it kind of continuing off of the curve of the uh, tonsil itself, like so. That's more so if, if you know there's a structure down that they need to get around and they can easily get around it like that, pass it around and grab the other side and tie. Other times, surgeons just ask for a free tie, you just hand them a free tie. Now the next skill is, it's an important one. <laughs> Learning how to cut the suture properly. Uh, the surgeon is tying, 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 and suturing, suturing, suturing. They get to the end of the suture, they tie their knot, and they're holding up both of the strings, waiting for you to cut it. Now, if it's deep tissue, and it's not superficial, you leave a little bit of a tail on there. Now, when I say a little bit of a tail, you take the scissor all the way down to the knot, then angle it 45 degrees and cut. That will leave a little tail. You also do those types of uh, suture cutting when you're using uh, you know, proline or PDS because the knots that are thrown into those sutures don't hold nearly as tightly as the multifilament sutures like Vicrol and stuff. 
so they do have a tendency to unravel a little bit. So having a little bit of an extra tail at the end of the knot helps keep that knot in place. Now when it comes to things like skin stitches, where you want to have as little tail as possible, you are basically going to be taking that scissor as close to that knot, sliding that scissor all the way down to the knot until you feel it, and then cut. It's key not to cut the knot. That's a skill that it's just, it's just learned, and it still does happen every now and then. Don't be worried if it happens. Surgeons usually get upset, or FAs, but it, it happens. Now these next three skills I wanted to go over were things that I had pre I previously touched on them in a Surgical Sharps video a while back. But number one is how to properly load uh, a blade on a handle. Um, you know, obviously loading a blade with your hands, we're all guilty of it when we're in the operating room, when we're hasty and stuff like that. You really shouldn't do it and you should always use a needle holder to load that blade and always use a needle holder to unload that blade. Sharp incidents can happen every day. So you gotta be careful about that stuff. Um, loading the needle properly and also, you know, techniques that you can use to take the, the tails and swedges off of a needle when you're placing a needle back on the needle magnet. And great techniques for organizing your needle magnet. I personally like to always lay my needles in twos just because it makes it easier to count. I know AST doesn't like us counting in twos, but honestly it streamlines things and makes things so much easier when you have 80, 90, well over 100 sutures in a case. Counting by twos is so much easier and organizing all your needles on that needle magnet in twos is just, it's key for those big cases. Now lastly, uh, this skill is something that is, it's kind of specific to you and your surgeon because sometimes surgeons do different things, uh, but hand signals. Hand signals are a big thing in the OR. Um, when you start working with a surgeon long enough to the point where he, doesn't, he or she doesn't even have to ask for anything, it just really comes down to either hand signals or the surgical tech or assistant just absolutely having all the steps of the surgery down to a T that they don't even need to ask for anything. But in the event that you do see uh, you know, hand signals, a lot of the times you'll just see him, he or she, the surgeon, put their hand out for any type of like needle holder or um, you know, Kelly clamp or mosquito or something like that. It just depends on what's happening during the case but more than likely they're gonna need a needle holder or clamp when they just hold their hand flat out like that. The other obvious hand signal is for a scissor. They will open up their hand and go and make kind of the gesture for a scissor. And in the event that happens, you pass them a scissor. Um, it, it really comes down to fine tuning things and the surgical tech watching the field constantly. Um, you know, if they're working in a deep space and you know your surgeon at this point in the surgery, instead of, you know, uh, holding, holding a needle holder like, like this or holding, a, or holding like a sponge forcep like, like this in their hand, they're actually going to hold it like this. You, you pass it to them like that. Uh, it's, it's, it really just comes down to experience working with a specific surgeon over and over and doing that specific case over and over and over and you kind of start to know and understand their little quirks on, uh, on how they perform surgery. So that's it guys. I hope you liked this little tidbit into uh, some surgical skills and kind of compress it all into one little video here. Um, my battery died in my big camera so if the audio sounded a little bit weird halfway through this that's, <laughs> that's why. I had to use it on this little DJI camera. Um, but that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching the videos. Oh, as always, uh, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, I love reading all your messages. I do read. I may not respond to all the messages, but I do read every single one of your messages that you guys comment below. So as always, thank you for the support. And I'll see you guys in the next video.
Bye.